Uh, welcome to this session that I'm going to share with um, a couple of other people if they are actually online, which I'm not certain. <laughs> Let's try to figure out. Um, this session is on the um, on Delphi, of course, and we are trying to use it to uh, cover what's happening around the product, uh, why it matters, um, why it's been important for 28 years, but why it's also relevant today. So um, I'll um, I'll get started going into the content. And uh, again, thank, um, welcome to this uh, session uh, from myself, uh, David, um, Jim, and uh, Kyle. Uh, sorry. Um, so what we want to start covering is what is uh, Delphi. Delphi is what we call the ultimate IDE for building applications, uh, for building multi-platform applications, for building high-performance applications, and uh, native applications. Um, you do that using uh, Object Pascal, uh, the modern version of Object Pascal that we've been expanding over years. And you use powerful design tools and a tool chain that's integrated with platform SDK for multiple uh, platform. Um, hi, Kyle. Sorry, I I got started anyway. <laughs> no worries. No worries. At all. And so, um, yeah, the Delphi is 28 years today. Um, these are a couple of the flyers that the company used to introduce them. And the core value proposition of the product, the core reason for the product hasn't really changed over these many years it's still relevant to be able to do the development fast and because that's a that's a good investment for for your business and it's still relevant to have compilers and to have some of the tools that have been through from from the beginning now if we want to have a better resolution of these images head to uh blogs.marketer.com and I, I i blogged them uh, earlier today so you you can actually read them uh, probably a bit better than here from from this um slide deck um is delphi used today because people at times think yeah it's 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 old no one is using it so i tried to compile a list of a list of businesses that use delphi today and this i mean i know specific companies for each of these areas so they're not like just came up with with a random list i can i could, I could name specific companies in oil and gas aerospace accounting automotive healthcare video games electronic invoices, government software, television, tax returns, advertising, kiosk application, flights management, business analytics, database front ends, trains, railways, engineering projects, complete ERP systems, manufacturing, circuit board designs and CPU design, uh, data processing, communication software, remote computer access, system administration, agricultural, um, a lot of mobile application, monetary production system, real-time financial transactions, warehouse automation, shipping, logistics, um, geographical application, measurement, architecture, music editors, and um, animated movies, banking systems, development tools, tools for developers, um, tracking of tracks, and uh, animated movies. That's, again, we could continue with a very, very, very long list. And these are things that are being done today with Delphi. Uh, around the world. Now, Delphi started as a Windows application, but now it goes way beyond it. It's still the best in class Windows platform uh, with uh, integrated support from the visual component library to the entire platform's API, whether it's the traditional Windows API, whether it's COM, whether it's the Winner T APIs. Uh, including all of the features in the Windows app SDK, the latest SDK that works alongside with the Windows SDK. So all of this is covered with a nicely integrated solution. But also we now offer multi-source development, including the UI for different platforms through FireMonkey. So you can have the same application, same UI targeting Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Linux. And we compile native application for each of these platforms. Um, 
You can also build web services, server-side programs for Windows and Linux. You can integrate them with Apache and IIS. So it's way more than a Windows-specific dev tool uh, today, and it really encompasses a lot of different use cases and uh, scenario. So there is a short video that I, that I recorded just to give a feeling. If someone is kind of distracted and, and kind of new and is not really aware what this what i just said really means in terms of how you start building an application in delphi i've created a short video if someone can run it <laughs> this is the delphi ide it lets you easily create applications in object pascal or delphi language you can rapidly drop some components to a form, add code behind. For example, we want to add the items to the items of the list box. We want to add the text entered in the edit box. We can Compile and run this application. And here we have it running. And notice that if you go to release mode and build and open the application executable folder, all we have is a very small standalone executable that's self-contained, there's no dependency. So all you need to move this application to different computer is copy this executable file. There's no runtime dependency. There's no deployment environment. It's a, just a single exe with everything, including runtime and visual libraries built into it. This might not look like the most modern and nice application. We can add a style to it. For example, let's pick the Windows 10 blue style. Now we can add a panel, we can align it, we can move the button and we can move the edit inside the panel, align the button on the right, make it bigger, align the edit with the remaining area, align this list box with the entire surface. And now we have the same behavior, but in a nicer look and feel. The code behind the application can be extremely complex out of a full blown, sophisticated, object oriented app. And if you navigate into our class libraries, you can see the complexity of the and richness of the object Pascal code. We have full integration up not only for the classic Windows API, but also for WinRT. And for example, here is a simple application using the T Edge Browser component. And this is WebView 2 control from Microsoft, which is based on Chromium, running within an application. You can also use Delphi to create a multi-device application. You can use Delphi today to create a multi-device application for multiple target platforms. Just select a folder where to place it, generate the application, and you can see it, how it's going to look on, on Windows. But you can also switch to a macOS look and feel. You can switch to an iOS style or to an Android style. And you can also preview the application on different forms, factors, and actual devices. So you can see how your application will look on your, on an iPhone or an Android phone, or how it would look on a tablet. And of course, for each of these target platforms, you can simply select and build the application 
that's going to be a native application built for the Intel or ARM target that you select. All within the same source code and the same application logic and UI library. So that's taking the original Delphi RAD concept to modern multi-device architecture. One area in which Delphi keeps shining is database support. You can navigate through available data sources across almost all of the existing databases, grab one table, configure your application, add a data source mapping conduit to your data set, and then just drop down a grid, make it full screen, and connect it to the data source. And if you open the query, which is a simple SQL statement against your DB, you can open it at design time and preview your application, either with the Windows standard styling or picking one of the nice and model UI styles. And this is the app running. Okay, I think we're back live. And um, so th this, this short intro, I mean, it, we wanted to show it just, just in case you're not so familiar with, with Delphi and its core concept. But the thing I want to reiterate is that Delphi compiles to native code uh, on different platforms. Uh, most of the compilers, the known Windows compiler is based on an LV LLVM compiler infrastructure. But the main point as, as a developer and as an end user that there is no dependency on, a, on an execution environment. There's no .NET runtime to install in the right version. There's no Java dependency. There's no JavaScript runtime. This not only makes the application faster, uh, there's no just-in-time compilation or any other uh, heavy runtime support. Um, the application is a native application for the platform like it was built with C or C++ um, with the advantage of being flexible, readable, nice, and, and so forth. Now, again, the advantage is the application is going to be fast. Um, Xcopy deployment, meaning you don't have to come up with a very complicated and sophisticated solution for, for installing the application to the, to the customer and making sure all of the dependencies are there. Um, and it's secure because, well, being binary and not having a runtime means there are no bugs in the runtime that is going to affect you. Um, in today's world where applications are really overbloated, specifically on Windows, uh, this really makes a difference. And um, yeah, you can think, well, size is not a problem, but if you want to update the application often, uh, also download size becomes smaller and you have a number of advantages um, alongside. So what's great in Delphi is the developer productivity that really shines, is the fact that applications are fast and native, is the access to the platform APIs, because you can really always uh, go down to the, um, the uh, Objective-C APIs on, on iOS, the Java classes on, on Android, the native uh, or traditional or new um, or modern APIs uh, on the Windows platform. Um, it's also database access. That's a key to the to the product design, and so the reason it's called Delphi. Um, it's the strong community with a lot of technology partners, MVPs, authors. It's the visual designers that let you create a prototype fast without giving up on the ability to create complex, sophisticated, object-oriented architecture and have the application that's built out of your out of your metadata rather than than manually. Uh, if you want application to scale, but the one of the most important things is the backwards compatibility. So the fact that when you invest your money and your years of development and you add up with code, that code is going to be kept relevant 
uh, over the years. Um, if you if you built a Delphi application 25 years ago, it's Delphi three, I would guess, or two, I don't know exactly. Um, that code, and, and you wrote a million lines of code, you can probably bring it to today's Windows 11 target with a very limited effort, and probably reuse some of it when going when going multi device. And, and to other platforms. That's unique in the industry. For all other tools, you are, all, every five or six years, you have basically to kind of almost restart from scratch and rewrite everything. That's a huge cost for uh, developers. Um, so what's happening around Delphi today? Uh, let's come to, to today compared to the past. So first thing I already mentioned is the focus on Windows and specifically Windows 11. Um, we are uh, being focusing on it. That's also the reason we picked 11 in, in the number. As mentioned, we support um, the, the big thing about, about Windows is Project Reunion, which is the reunification of the WinRT and the new world with the traditional Windows SDK. And this basically gives traditional Windows applications that were neglected by Microsoft for a bit first-class citizenship on the platform. So the universal Windows platform is, is no more, and native applications are, are have all of the power of any other application on the platform. We do offer WinRT, uh, WinRT API integration. We offer out-of-the-box from the ID MSAX packaging, so you can create a package and distribute it to the Windows Store if you want, or use it as an installer. And the other thing I, I showed earlier, the Edge browser component that's based on WebView 2, which is basically the embedded version of Edge um, based on Chromium. So it's a modern and, and very, very smooth um, uh, HTML rendering engine that's what well, everyone uses, say, from Apple these days. So that's one area, but the other area that's been important for us and we're trying to follow is the transition to ARM also on the desktop, not just on mobile. Uh, this has been clearly led by Apple with macOS, which is now moving on uh, to, to ARM. Um, and we have offered a bit the ability to build native application for macOS 64-bit um, ARM, so native M1, M2, uh, application, not through the, the conversion layer that uh, Apple provides. We offer the ability to create a universal binary, so package both the Intel and the ARM application in a single, in a single binary. And more recently, we've introduced sim iOS simulator support on the, same, on the same platform. So that's another thing we've done. The other big focus over recent years has been making sure we easy the transition, which is not simple, to uh, the use of 4K monitors, multiple monitors, different resolutions, and so forth. Uh, we offer extensive VCL support for high DPI and multi-monitor. We introduce virtual image list, a uh, very sophisticated mechanism, uh, the ability to have high DPI styles alongside with traditional styles. And we brought these features to our own ID. So now in, in the 11 series, um, the ID is, offers high DPI with very crisp fonts, looks very nice. And we have enabled the high DPI designer directly in the form designer, along with the ability to, as I showed, show and use styles directly into the designer rather than um, having to run the application to, to preview it with, uh, with styles. We're also focused on help providing good support for cloud and web services on the client side and also on the server side. Uh, we have integration with uh, AWS, Azure, Google Pl Cloud Platform. Specifically for AWS, we've partnered with Appercept to uh, offer a SDK for Delphi, which has been extended over, over the last few months um, to uh, inc add more and more ready to use uh, Amazon APIs. But also we offer an HTTP and REST client library. We offer a REST debugger. We offer automated mapping of, of JSON data to data sets. And we're really trying to make it very easy and smooth to create clients for any REST or SOAP lab server out there. If you want to look at the server side, we offer a turnkey solution. It's called RAT server. Uh, 
um, if you looked into it and thought, nice, but hey, it's expensive, uh, you should reconsider. There is a RAT server light that's free for everyone, free unlimited deployment for everyone on enterprise version. And also the uh, the enterprise and architect version allow for, for the deployment for free of the full of the full server with some limitations. Now there are other trends in the IT landscape. Uh, the, the entire big data and artificial intelligence is of course very, very sophisticated. Um, what we offer beside the integration with remote services, which are often a good solution to uh, deliver um, the, the, this type of angle in an application, we've also done a lot of work to allow Delphi developers to leverage Python APIs uh, and Python libraries directly from the IDE. Uh, of course, the ability uh, is to mix and match Delphi and Python code, uh, having a Python application host Delphi code or a Delphi application host Python code. But you can also get to the point that you're just writing Delphi code, but using uh, TensorFlow and other popular uh, libraries uh, that that originate in, in Python. So the Python code is embedded into your dev application um, seamlessly. Now there, uh, another thing that's extremely important is the ability to do continuous integration, to create an entire ecosystem around the dev tools. Uh, of course, developers want automated testing, want repeatable and stable build systems. Um, we support a lot of build system. We support command line compilation on a build machine. Uh, we integrate support for DUnit and DUnit X, which are two popular unit testing uh, solutions for Delphi code. We offer version control integration in the IDE and the way our source code is structured, which is basically mapped to text only, um, allows for a smooth and easy integration with uh, version control systems. Um, there is more to it. There is a security angle I might touch base on later on, but it, it's one of the many trends that we always monitor and provide a good solution for. With that, I want to let David chime in about a few things we've done uh, around the Delphi uh, IDE. Thanks, Marco. So we want to cover just a few of the things we've done just in version 11.x, so 11.0, 11.1, and 11.2. Um, the IDE has had a, a strong focus. Um, we've done a lot of work, as, as you may have heard, on uh, Code Insight. Uh, we replaced the system entirely using uh, something called LSP, Delphi LSP, and I have a whole slide on this following. Uh, but I want to focus on, on some of the other sort of more I know interesting usability tweaks or uh, things that really sort of modernize the IDE. For example, one of the principles of designing in, in Dolphy is that uh, you use the form designer and what you see when you design is very close to, to what you get when you run the application. And when we introduce styles for VCL applications that to a certain extent no longer became the case because you would design and it would look like, uh, like Windows then you would run your application and it look completely different. And we support styles within the VCL designer, but not only that, we support uh, multiple active styles. So within the VCL, and this is reflected in the VCL designer, you can have a button with one style and uh, another button with another style. Um, so uh, that makes it a, a lot easier to really see as you're designing how your UE will, will look to your, your customers. Within the IDE itself, we uh, greatly improved the, the general UE of it uh, several years ago now, but we continue tweaking that. Uh, as you can see in the screenshot uh, on, the, on the top, we try to communicate quite a lot about what tabs contain. So different types of tabs have different colors by default. You, you can turn that off. Um, blue for, for normal code and forms and so forth. But you can see in that screenshot, the welcome page is sort of a, a light purple and uh, source control tabs are, are green. And in a similar way, we indicate you know, when a file is modified or when it's read only, or um, you know, these, the, this kind of important information is, is all communicated in the, in the tab. We also added support for markdown, uh, very commonly used uh, rich text format if you 
grab something open source from GitHub, then it'll most likely come with a Markdown readme, and that can now be both edited and previewed within the IDE. Help Insight, which is part of Code Insights, um, went through a few transitions as we moved to Delphi LSP, but uh, we moved back again to providing the contents of the Help Insight window, which is the tooltip that shows when you mouse over a symbol and you know, shows uh, information about it. Um, you know, for a method, for example, it will show uh, the method and, and all its parameters. Uh, to be transformed via XSLT, now, this may not be something that you yourself directly use, but there are plugins for the IDE that uh, mean that you can take the information that's displayed and transform it in various ways. Um, Documentation Insight is a, is a famous one. So we've, uh, we've reintroduced that, which is, is very good for, for some tooling. And then there are some of the smaller features. Um, you can see in the screenshot and the bottom screenshot that uh, code that is in a macro or a, a defined that is not defined is grayed out. Um, the CPU disassembly view has syntax highlighting because assembly code is code and we should syntax highlight it. Um, the welcome page has been redesigned and rather than being a hosted web browser, it's uh, fully based on the VCL. I mean, the VCL is great. Of course, we should use it. Uh, and it supports plugins. You can write your own content and many things like that. The IDE is continually evolving and, and being improved. Uh, next slide, please, Marco. Thanks. So I want to speak a little bit about our approach to Code Insight, uh, which is our term for code completion and the various tooltips that pop up uh, when you use the code editor, these, those sort of features. A while ago in uh, version 10.4, I think, we changed uh, quite fundamentally under the hood how this general feature uh, worked. And we moved it to something called LSP. And LSP is a standard protocol for providing the kind of information uh, that code completion or these other features display and, and use. Um, now, it's a very modern approach. And we even ship a Delphi LSP add-on for Visual Studio Code. So if you have VS Code uh, and you have Delphi installed, you can use our Delphi LSP server to, to provide code completion for Delphi uh, within VS Code. But there are a number of other advantages for this. And one of them is, is greater stability. Uh, one of the main reasons there was uh, that it reduced memory usage in the IDE. So LSP uses a, a separate server. It's a separate process. Um, that means that uh, the IDE doesn't have to handle co-completion um, or calculating co-completion within it. And um, it simply needs to, to display it. That means the IDE uses less memory. And if you have a really gigantic project, which many people do, um, and it needs a lot of memory to calculate things like co-completion results, then there is an entire process uh, dedicated to that. Um, it also helps that we move to a single parser. You know, the, the compiler actually is what generates those results. And basically, if you have code that compiles, then uh, you know, the co-completion engine should, should handle it. But it helps you do multiple things at once. We actually have multiple Delphi LSP processes providing different types of responses, you know, code completion and error insights and so forth. And that helps the IDE be a lot more responsive and, and generate things more quickly. Um, now, you may not see that directly um, because you simply see the, the results on the screen, but it means that it's been easier for us to, to calculate multiple things um, going on at the same time. But also, it allows you to do multiple things at once. Uh, one of the key ones was that before we introduced this, you could not have co-completion, for example, while you were debugging your application, uh, because both of those worked within the IDE itself. Now that we've split that out, so um, the display is within the IDE, but the calculation is outside, you can uh, use, use both at the same time. And that also keeps the IDE responsive. The main thread never waits if you press Control Space to, to get uh, your co-completion results. Um, in the old days, the, the IDE would pause for a little bit while it calculated. These days, you can just keep on typing. It'll be completely responsive. You'll, you'll never notice a slowdown. And I think what I want to emphasize here by explaining all this is that um, we're continually evolving and, and taking modern approaches to Delphi and its, and its tooling. And um, you know, this is a great example of a, uh, a fantastic modern approach. Marco, back to you for the next slide.
sorry, I was muted. Uh, we did many more things. Uh, thanks, uh, David. We did many more things in, in Delphi 11, Alexandra, and many other areas beside the ID, including the libraries. I'm not going to read through all of this, but we added new classes. We improved some of the existing components. We modernized some of the classic Windows components, um, adopting newer versions um, and enhanced the Edge browser, web browser. We created a WinUI 3 demo that was released some time ago, improved. FireMonkey also allowing the integration of WebView 2 in FireMonkey and improved some of the database uh, components. It's again no, no need to go through the details. Some of them have been announced in past in past releases. But the point I want to make is that it's not that we are standing still. Um, we are focused on improving the quality, but also extending and expanding uh, some of the small little features, if you want. I mean, call small features a new class that's added to the library uh, to make sure that the, the, it better serves the, the developers. Um, now, the thing that I want to mention, because, well, this is a session on Delphi, so let's talk one minute about the language. Um, it's not going through um, incredible breakthrough, but it's going through some fundamental change that are happening over time. and. Um, Two of them I want to mention. The first is managed records. Uh, managed records are really a game changer for a lot of coding uh, in 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 the in the product. The ability to have um, automatic code being executed while you instantiate a record uh, is really key because it allows you to use records which are more memory savvy and they use less memory and less CPU time to be allocated and removed. Um, but at the same time, have special side effects when the record comes in place or gets out of scope. Um, the other feature that was introduced and might have not see, been and might have been seen like a simple syntactic sugar thing is the ability to define variables in lines so or rather than at the beginning of, of a block um, within any block. Um, the difference there is not just that you can write the code slightly differently, more, more with a C style, but the difference is that the lifetime and the scope of that variable or that object uh, is modified. So it's not just introducing a different syntax, it's introducing a different uh, scope, which, well, we haven't done anything similar for many years, and is really a change from the classic from the classic Pascal. Uh, the other nice side thing is type inference that often can be used so you don't have to indicate the type, the compiler will, will figure it out. There are other, other smaller change that we, we are done and we continue doing. We introduced binary literals and uh, digit separator support listed here. But a relevant thing we have done on the compiler over the 11X series is really make sure we, we improve our uh, support for platform security. Uh, and that implies um, adding uh, or improving, because it was already there, the support for uh, data execution prevention and uh, ASLR, uh, also including the um, what is called high entropy ASLR, which means the ability on Win64 application not just to um, allocate the memory in different places randomly. So if your an attacker attacks a different, a specific memory location, every execution that that location would be, there would be something else. But with high entropy, you're using the entire 64 bit space. Um, now this is causing some trouble because if you have your pointers uh, incorrect in, in Win64, uh, you might not see any error until you really allocate be above the four gigabyte boundary. Uh, High entropy ASLR really pushes the, uh, above the that boundary, and we turn it on by default. It's causing some hiccups, but it's important because security today is critical, and all developers should be um, careful in making the application as secure as possible. Now, what I want to mention now, and then uh, we'll also going to do a quick video, is uh, what we are working on. So that we're we covered so far what, what's been done in the 11X series, but we are working on a new uh, version 
that is codenamed Malawi, and we've invited some of you uh, on the on the beta, and um, uh, a number of people have joined it. Um, that's going to be Rust Studio 11.3. Don't ask when it's going to be released because we're not going to tell. Um, we primarily focus on quality in this release. Um, we 11 X series has a lot of great features and we want to make them more robust and fast and, and more reliable, including in particular Delphi LSP, in general, the, the, the Rust Studio ID and compiler tool chains. Uh, the VCL library, we did a lot of work on styling to make those uh, work better and tackle some uh, scenarios that were not terribly, uh, working terribly well. We have further expanded our the Delphi debuggers. So now all non-Windows debuggers use the LLDB infrastructure. And finally, which is the feature we're also going to showcase, we have introduced a new tools API for the code editor. So you can take control of the editor and customize the look and feel of the editor. Before we get to the video, I, we also wanted to mention what's coming next after 11.3. Um, uh, we are focusing on some significant features to other products. There are a couple that we got permission to, to mention and anticipate. We are doing a lot of work on the C++ compiler, which might not be in, important for you if you are focused on the Delphi side of things. Uh, we're also doing integration with Visual Assist technology first for C++. On the VCL side, we are doing uh, another round of VCL modernization features, specifically focusing on MDI, the good old model-driven architecture that Microsoft has neglected for many years, but a lot of our customers still use in small and large applications. So we want to make sure it's up to date and can be used with styles, with high DPI application and so forth. And on the FireMonkey library, we are doing extensive work to put Skia, the Skia library, which is also uh, at the heart of Flutter, at the heart of Google Chrome, as one of the key elements of the uh, FireMonkey architecture. So this is this is work that's ongoing, and it's going to take some time to, to get, uh, but we are committed to further improve the product with some great new features in the future. And with that, I think um, we are good to go with the um, video that David recorded earlier about um, what's coming in Malawi. Hi, David here. This is a sneak peek at some of what's new in 11.3 Malawi. I'll show you some small but neat IDE features with a focus on the tools API. It's important to remember that 11.3 has a wide focus, so this sneak peek is seeing just a subset of what's coming soon. The Tools API is a set of interfaces we provide that lets you write plugins or add-ons for the IDE itself. We view the Tools API as key because it lets you, or anyone, extend to the IDE. If you find something that you want to be different or you think could be done better, you can write code that lives in the Delphi and C++ Builder IDE and implements that. The Tools API is very comprehensive. You can write new dockable windows, you can access the debuggers, you can write a different code completion engine, you can add a new options dialog page. Pretty much whatever you want to do, the Tools API lets you do it. That's why it matters to the future of Delphi, because we believe helping you write tools and improve productivity or customize your working environment is important. I said the Tools API is very comprehensive, and it is. But until 11.3, there was one area it didn't give much access to, the code editor. And the code editor is a really useful place for plugins because it's the main place you interact with and see information. Lots of plugins work in the IDE's code editor, but they currently all use hacks to access it, and that can also reduce the IDE stability. So in 11.3, which is a quality-driven release, we have a new feature that will help improve stability as plugins move away from hacks towards using the new official API. Plus, it's a really powerful API to use. The new interfaces live in toolsapi.editor.paz. There's a vast amount of information you can query about the editors and their contents, about what is visible on screen and drawn where, which I'm simply not going to show today because of time. There's also a wide variety of events. You can have events called when scrolling, resizing, when regions are collapsed, and so forth. We have extensive documentation showing how to use these that will be made live when 11.3 is released, and that includes three demo apps. 
I'm going to show you only one demo app today. Here I have a method in a plugin that's called when the editor is painting text, that is, painting the syntax highlighted code on screen. You can use this event to change or completely replace the code that's painted. First, to change it. Comments are green and maybe I think that's boring, they should be red. So this intercepts before the editor does its painting, sets the font color to red, but does nothing else. That means the editor goes on to do its default painting, but you've changed the font color it will use when it paints. Let's have a look. There are lots of green comments on screen. What happens when I install the plugin? And there we go. Here I want to show you two other new editor features. Firstly, highlighting matching words. There is a method parameter context. Look how when the cursor is in the word context anywhere on screen, the other places context is located are highlighted. For this demo, I have this configured to happen as I move the cursor. But by default, in other words, when you install 11.3, it only happens when double clicking or selecting a word. I personally like it more responsive, but the default setting is to only happen when selecting something. Second, what if you want to know where your output binary is located? You've been able to find a unit or the project file location for some time by choosing Show in Explorer from the context menu, but they have a fixed location, whereas the output binary can be in different locations depending on the build configuration settings. So in 11.3, you can right click on Build Config and click Show in Explorer, and it will show the built binary. Finally, a quick note about Delphi LSP. We've worked on quality for it heavily this release, and it's working really well. All right, let's go back to the Editor Tools API. Now let's do something a bit more dramatic for the editor, override its painting completely. Let's say I'm a fan of Leonardo da Vinci, who famously wrote everything reversed. And I think that all the reserved words like procedure, begin, end, if, else, and so forth, should be highlighted and written backwards. To do this, I'll paint the text myself, and then after that, set allow default painting to false to tell the editor that I've painted so there's no need for it to do any painting at all. Let's try that. Beautiful. All those reserved words are drawn backwards and highlighted. This is a great productivity boost if you're a renaissance era artist, not so much for the rest of us, but you can see from this demo that you can do anything you want in the editor. In fact, this demo shows only a small amount of what you can do. It's such a good API that we changed some of our editor features to use this API too. Both error insight and matching highlighted words both use it. We got a good performance boost by doing that as well. This small demo is one of three that we ship in 11.3, and the other two demos are even cooler. There's comprehensive documentation of the new API as well. We hope third-party plugins switch to it to improve stability, and also because it's so flexible and you can do so much, we're really looking forward to seeing what you create with it. So that's a quick sneak peek at what's coming in Rad Studio 11.3. A very comprehensive new tools API for the code editor, of which we've only shown you a small amount. Highlighting matching words in the code editor, finding the output binary in Explorer, and a much improved mentioned that no feature is committed until GA, and we're not announcing the GA, but you might have seen uh, advertising of a um, launch webinar happening at the end of this month. So um, make sure that you sign up for that webinar, and at that point, we'll be able to showcase all of the features um, that, that are coming in 11.3 and the quality focus uh, compared to the limited sneak peek that we did uh, today. Um, OK, I think I need to stand in for Jim because I don't know if he still has having audio trouble. <laughs> he was having some problem earlier. So I I'll, I'll guess I'll need to keep going. Um, there are a couple of things I wanted to mention. I'm going to be short on this so we can take a few questions here and there maybe. Um, one thing that's important is that we have ramped up a number of open source related initiatives. 
uh, for example, we have made uh, Ball for Delphi, which was an old library that a lot of customers were, were still using. We made that uh, fully open source with sponsored projects like Dev C++, uh, we sponsored many Python-related projects, we sponsored a Sorna Delphi um, implementation. It's a Delphi integration for uh, Sorna Cube. Um, and, and there is more that's happening in this space that I really have time uh, to cover, specifically the, the Python integration that uh, Jim is promoting and pushing and doing a lot of work about is absolutely great because again, as I mentioned, it lets you, I mean, run Delphi applications that use Python libraries or create Python applications that use uh, Delphi libraries and Delphi code. Um, just a quick reminder of websites that are part of the, the ecosystem. Of course, there is an official company website, www.mercado.com. There's a blogs platform. Uh, and these are more well known. Um, uh, other side that are relevant is if you want to learn Delphi or you have someone who's interested in learning Delphi, you can go to learndelphi.org. It hosts the community edition, but also a very large amount of learning resources, videos, documentation, and so forth. Um, Gettingnow.hembargero.com list of the available Get It packages there that can be downloaded and installed from within the IDE. Uh, MyMarketer.com is our customer's portal where you can check your licenses and download, uh, binar download binary files. And above all, this day, we need to remember Delphi.MarketerO.com, a website that was created for the 25th birthday anniversary three years ago. It has a free Delphi One client server version you can download and install. And it has interviews with um, Chuck J and, uh, and Anders, uh, the creators of the VCL and of the Delphi uh, language, Anders Heisberg. So it, these are all good, good references in case uh, you missed um, any of those. Um, the other thing that was mentioned earlier in the previous session, we have this enterprise apps built in Delphi challenge. You can submit articles and, um, and you can, um, well, get some money if they get accepted. Uh, it's interesting to see uh, the variety of things that, that we are getting from it. Um, these are just some screenshots that I grabbed from those. Uh, it's about everything. Delphi, as I was showing earlier with that big list of industries Delphi is being used on today, uh, there is a huge variety of things that people use the product for. And they're all equally important for us. And we want to make sure that it remains a viable solution in all of these um, scenarios. Now, we also host some great conference and events. And when you have a chance to see us, us in person, we're always more happy than doing <laughs> online webinars, although we, we love the online webinars as well. Uh, these are pictures from recent events. And um, we always really enjoy uh, meeting uh, these this large crowds. I mean, the big, largest ones being those in Brazil. And with that, um, if Kyle is online, I want, we wanted to let him say a couple of final words around uh, where Delphi is within the company. Yes, thanks, Marco. And, and thanks, everyone. Uh, I uh, was, was supposed to speak at the beginning, but of course, there's always some technical difficulties. Um, so I just want to thank you all and thank the community for being so engaged. Um, you know, it's what, what keeps Delphi um, moving uh, all these years later. So um, the, the fact that we're, we're modern um, and able to, to compete um, on the latest platforms is in large part thanks to our community uh, and our development partners around the world. So we really appreciate that. Uh, just a bit about uh, kind of where Embarcadero sits inside of IDERA, our, our parent company. Um, this is the, the IDERA DevTools unit. Um, you can see here we have quite a few different companies, uh, some newer. Um, the most direct kind of, uh, I guess, that we have uh, kind of contact with are going to be UltraEdit and then Ultimato. Um, UltraEdit, if you haven't heard uh, or haven't had exposure to that, um, is a really awesome text editor, but more than that, um, we are uh, also launching uh, a newer edition of the Ultra Compare um, and working on some ways to integrate that uh, into other platforms and IDEs. Um, but take a look at this. Uh, you can see all the full list at IDERA Corp um, of, of all the companies under IDERA. 
but these are the ones that uh, I think would have closer relation to what you all are doing in your workflow. Um, and um, certainly if there's anything that we can do in terms of introductions um, for, for our customers, uh, introducing you to those, uh, we'd be happy to do that. And, and, I and I guess that was the last slide. So yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we have like seven minutes for to, to answer any, any question. Um, I've seen some popping up, but um, I, I haven't been paying a lot of attention, honestly, because I was speaking at the same time. Um, hi, guys. Uh, Jim, Jim, unfortunately, he's got no audio, so <laughs> he's, uh, he's kind of uh, a little bit hampered at the moment. Um, I can tell you some of the questions that we, we've been getting along the way. Um, a few people are asking the usual questions about community edition, and we're saying the same thing. There is no time schedule um, for any community editions. The ones that are available is the one that's available. Am I right? And yeah, the, the one is available is the one that, is the one that exists, which is based on the latest um, time four. Uh, we are planning releasing a new community edition, but but no time frame. Yeah, sure. Um, some people saying, will the slide deck be available for download? The one uh, that you We showed? can make it available, no problem at all. Yeah, that, I, <laughs> yeah. Sure. I wasn't sure. I thought we might be able to. We no, usually, there is nothing um, secret. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and in fact, we take a lot of time to say, uh, by the way, there's a few caveats to this. Um, uh, some people asking about Android uh, 13 as well um, and saying, could it be supported? I don't see that question now. Actually. So what? Yeah, what's going to happen is that in 11.3, the coming release, we are going to up our support for a bunch of new versions of many operating systems. Uh, the details will, will get out when, when we release, but you can expect that we are um, actively uh, supporting the latest Android, the latest iOS, the latest macOS, um, which have been released uh, after uh, the last version, which was 11.2. So 11.2 cannot technically support something that was it's not released yet officially. So, but we're also upping our Linux and Windows Server support. So uh, expect official support for a lot of new platforms that. As far as we know, almost everything works already using 11.2, but official support is coming uh, with uh, with 11.3 for, for many new targets. Excellent. Um, another question which comes up quite a lot is, um, is this going to be, uh, is 11.3.3 going to be binary compatible with 11.2? I know the answer to this, but I'll let you give the official answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, we, we move now to, to, to the, to, to, Two, G, two digits version number. So anything in 11X is compatible with, with any package or DCU in 11X. Um, so yes, 11.3 code is going to be binary compatible with 11.2, 11.1, and, and 11. Uh, the day we will move to an incompatible version, it's not going to be called 11. It's going to be called uh, something else. So. Something else, yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and uh, someone's saying happy birthday. I think they mean happy birthday. Delphi, yeah, so. and Yay. by the way, I don't know how well you can see it, but this is the uh, original Delphi One box sitting here. And inside it, there, is, there are the manuals and the CD. Wow. <laughs> a CD, did you say? I didn't think Delphi yeah, One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a CD. No, oh, no, I betas didn't... were on floppies. The Delphi yeah, One. Yeah, I, I seem to remember having a lot of floppy disks. So, yeah. Uh, I remember um, there was a lot of floppy disks as well. Um, okay, and uh, this is a question again, which is kind of a housekeeping question. Will we have a roadmap for the coming years? I, I'm not sure whether Landerson means coming year or coming years. But, uh, right. No, we, we, we are not going to publish roadmaps the same, same, in the same way we did with, with the older company. And um, uh, the... The reason is that it's very hard to predict in advance what's going to happen. And um, it's nice to be open and to show what's coming along. But if then we don't deliver what we are saying it's coming, it becomes a bit, I mean, more of an annoyance than an advantage. So the current positioning is not to have an official roadmap publicly available. 
but to provide hints and ideas like like we just did about what's coming in 11.3 and after that what we are working on already for for a future release uh, the other thing that we're always open to do is if your company has has needs to make decisions and to make investments we are always open to have a conversation and within 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 a private chat with companies and within a conversation we can certainly provide more information about what's coming and what's the roadmap so get in touch with your sales representative or get in touch with us directly we can arrange for 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 a chat and we can go over things in more in more detail yeah, I definitely encourage everyone to, you know, if, if there's a, a need you have, a specific application or a specific target um, that, that you have, um, you know, deadlines on and, and want to have some clarity on what we're doing, um, certainly reach out to us uh, directly. We're, we're happy to share some of that information in terms of what's, you know, what's in the works, what we're focused on. And a lot of that is driven by what you're asking for. So, um, the, you know, the more you can submit re requests, feature requests or bug reports or what have you, the, the, the more attention those items get. Uh, and we do take those seriously. So uh, as you can imagine, there's a, there's a lot of different requests and a lot of different directions that we could go in. Um, but knowing how to maximize that is really going to be based on your feedback to us. So uh, keep that in mind as you submit those requests. Yeah, I mean, Ed Barcadero wants the product to be useful to people, and uh, we, one of the best ways is uh, listening to feedback and telling you know tell people what you want, and uh, if it's feasible, then obviously if it's a good idea, a good idea is a good idea, and uh, sure, absolutely, uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, um, I think that's probably it. how we're doing for time. Uh, I think we have like half a minute left. <laughs> yeah, so we did pretty good. Uh, okay, so. Um, Thanks a lot, guys. Um, Jim Thank will you. be around later, I'm sure. Uh, very exciting. And David joined us in his little avatar there as well. So he, you don't get to see him moving and, uh, and speaking. But he's definitely still there, aren't you, David? I'm oh, here. Well, yeah, yes. And it's been great yeah, to yeah, everyone yeah. For, for attending. I, excellent. Okay.